Hello! Do you wear glasses like me? They can be a pain, can't they? Especially with FPV. But it's kind of nice that some modern goggle manufacturers have started putting movable diopters into their goggles. Uh, the Walksnail ones I have do it. The DJI Goggles 2 and the Integra also do it. Typically, um, I think they go from about plus two to minus six, which is great. However, what if the goggles you have don't do it? And what if you have a slightly more complicated prescription? It's quite common to have uh, an astigmatism uh, in your eyesight. And if, if you've got that and you've just got the basic diopter lenses, then your vision's not quite gonna be as perfect as could be. It depends on the level of your astigmatism. I kind of just about get away with uh, these being on minus six, but it's not as good as it could be. So what can we do about it? Well, there's a company called Hans VR that does lenses for the DJI goggles, the, the original DJI goggles, the DJI goggles 2 and the Integra. So I got hold of some to test them out. So let me get my goggles and I just thought of a flaw. I don't actually own any DJI goggles. I own the Walksnail goggles, but they haven't got lenses for these as at the moment. Um, hmm. I didn't think that one through at all, did I? Well, let me tell you how they fit in. In the DJI goggles, you've got uh, two simple lenses that push over the uh, front of the existing lenses and you're ready to go. Easy to take in, easy to take out. With the DJI goggles 2 and the Integra, they actually come with these little um, eyepiece inserts in case you need something like this sort of correction. And so you put those in and you put those in the goggles and you're away. So how do I test this without having a pair of goggles? Well. The clue is in the name, Hans VR. They also do lenses for um, VR headsets. Uh, and these include things like the HP Reverb G2, the HTC Vibe, Vibe Pro, Vibe Focus, and HTC Cosmos, the Oculus Quest 2 or the Meta Quest 2, the Valve Index, the Pico Neo 3 Link and Pro, uh, the Pico 4, and the PSVR and PSVR 2. If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you probably know that I'm more of a gaming nerd than I am an FPV nerd because I can game every night, but I can't FPV every day because weather and it's like nighttime and stuff. So I just happen to have a couple of headsets. This is the PSVR, the original. I've got the VR2. These actually support wearing glasses inside. The only problem I find is when I put it on, I find myself having to put it at bizarre angles so it doesn't sort of catch my glasses. And in this one, I've actually got lens protectors in so my glasses can't scratch up. So what happens where they're slightly further out, they end up being more heavy and um, slightly tighter on my face. I thought it'd be great to get rid of this. So I thought if I can look at the quality of the lenses for a few VR headsets, then we get a good impression about how good they would be in the DJI goggles or other VR headsets. So let's take a look at them. I've got two pairs here, one's for the PSVR, one's for the PSVR 2. They fit slightly differently. Uh, all the lenses for all different headsets fit slightly differently because they're all different about how they work. But um, the PSVR 2 ones are quite similar to the DJI in terms of their push-in thing. The PSVR original, not so much, but let's get these out of the box. Let's see how to connect them to my VR headsets and uh, then I'll give them a go. Obviously that's quite subjective, it's, it's my vision, I have to tell you what I'm seeing, um, but you know, I'll give you my honest feedback and you can take it from there. Okay, I'm going to start with the lenses for the PSVR 2 because they're very very close to how it works on the original DJI goggles. We have a look in here, this is, this is my prescription, and this bit here is the part for the astigmatism correction. And these also have a blue light filter, uh, which means you know it cuts off that blue light and lessens eye strain. So you get them in this little nice pack because the good thing about these is if you want to take them out and let someone else use your headset it's, it's pretty easy to do so. So we've got a, a right lens and a left lens as indicated by the bag but don't worry because they're also written there. You see we've got R for right and we've got L for left and these couldn't be easier to put in. If I grab my uh, PSVR2 headset here and on this one, you don't even need to take out the uh, rubber part. I'm just gonna grab the left lens and it just literally presses in like that. You just press in and do it. The kit should also come with cleaning cloth, so clean your lens off first before you put it on, but of course you can just take these off. My one didn't, he forgot, but um, it normally would. I'm just gonna put the right one in. I can't quite do this on camera because I can't look through the 
the, the viewfinder and do it, but it's literally you place it over the top, you push on, and that's it. Both lenses on. Just a push fit, and you can just take them back off again if uh, somebody else wants to use it that doesn't have the same vision. It's uh, a couple of minute job. Very easy, very good. I'll be running this up in a minute to give you my thoughts, but meantime, let's have a look at the PS VR1. So, same sort of thing in the box, the card, the holder, the lens cloth, which <coughs> I didn't get, uh, but should be. And the PS VR1 is going to be similar, I think, to the Oculus Quest 2, in which it has magnetic attachments. So, if we see here, let's just put this aside a sec. Again, we have a, a little R there, just just which one it is. We have magnetic parts on here, and so they need to fit something magnetic. And so we have these stickers to put in, which then go stick on to the goggles, and then they magnetically stick on there, giving you the vision you need. Here are my PSVR1 goggles, and if you can see just in there, you've got this bit here. I bought these from uh, a place on eBay, someone was selling them. And it's basically a protector, so you won't scratch your lenses with your glasses or scratch your glasses with these lenses in case you push them on too much. So I need to take those out so I can put the, the magnets in there and um, put the lenses on. So I'm going to take these this uh, rubber bit off to do that so we've got a better view. Okay, got that rubber bit off. And uh, if you've never done it before, it's just these little um, lugs that push in. It's pretty easy to get on and off. And what happens is you just pop the magnet on there and obviously you remove the sticky tape. And then this comes along with its magnetic piece and will obviously magnetize to that bit once it's stuck down and go over the lens like that. So let me just take the sticky off and sort that out uh, just off camera because I cannot do this whilst I'm trying to film for a viewfinder. And there you go, that's the lenses um, installed. The good thing about this is these are such a specific shape that it's really hard to install the stickers wrong. But even if you do, they give you a couple of spares anyway. So that is, uh, that's pretty easy now. You just like literally drop them in and out. So let's put the face plate back on. Okay, face plate back on. Still a bit sweaty from my nose. I gave it a bit of a clean. So we're ready to test both headsets now and see how they go. Obviously now they're in, it, it's very easy just to take those out without having to, you know, mess with the, uh, the rubber part. Now I think one of the key problems with trying to show a VR experience is filming it and especially with the first headset because I've got to keep in front of uh, a camera up there to track it. So I'm going to try doing this. I've got this filming vaguely the screen, this GoPro filming mainly me. I'll give you my impressions uh, but I have to sort of sit back so you <laughs> I'll be off the screen on this camera. Anyway, glasses off. Headset on. All right, well, already I like the fact that I can I can see stuff. Uh, I haven't got my glasses. It feels like it's slightly more comfortable. This feels closer to my face. I've got the angle a little bit better. So let's, uh, let's try doing this. Let's go for a free flight. I am playing Ultra Wings. Let's just go for a free flight mode. And Ultra Wings is a pretty basic sort of flight sim. Pretty simple graphics pretty easy controls but it, it does feel like a, a proper sim. We are flying the micro light right now and I guess I don't need these headphones in. I've turned I've turned the main music off from the speakers just in case we get any copyright hits there uh, but I, I guess I don't need to hear the buzz of uh, this but this is looking nice it's looking as clear as it's ever looked because I don't have the added glasses fit behind me, I'll see what's going on, see where I've taken off from. Yeah, awesome. Now, one thing I was slightly worried about is do those blue screen filters lose any colour? And uh, I'm going to have to say no, everything looks... One thing it, it, it certainly is, it, it might be quite simple with the graphics, but it's certainly very colourful. Will I fit here? Yeah, just about. Let's bring this through here. This it's a fun little game. I hope they do one for the PSVR 2 as well. It's, it is very simple, but it's got a lot of uh, nice little challenges, different planes. It's it's a fun one to play. It's, it's the closest, certainly, to sort of FPV style game, if you like. And it was, it was fairly cheap. It's one of these things you get from the PlayStation Store, which pops up in little bargains occasionally. Let's see if we can get through here. Yeah. It's almost impossible to crash the... Um, 
the ultralight it's so it can go so slow and recover from anything uh, they've got some other stuff like uh, high power planes and gliders and stuff but they're not as much fun so I like looking just around again this is this is another FPV thing I, I love doing is just looking around and see what the wings are doing let's see if we can bring it through this little hangar I won't land here. We'll carry on. Keep that Red Bull people flying through the tunnel. Watch the wing. Yeah, we're in. Gonna make a, a tight turn here. In with a rudder too. Yeah, easy. And one more. That's a sailing boat. Hello people on the boat. Alright, let's try another game. You can play Doom in several ways, one of which is the free look mode, which is the only way I feel I can play a game like Doom. But my goodness, if you haven't got your VR legs, and especially in this first generation headset, it, um, it can be bad. See, you can basically aim with your head. Stop. Look. <laughs> that was a manly noise. I wasn't scared. Ah! We're going to have to change the weapons. There we go. Damn it. Take that evil creature. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if this is going to help not having glasses as well. Doom is a game that literally made me uh, vomit after about 10 minutes of playing it. But it seems alright at the moment. One thing I will say about this is normally playing indoors without the fan on. I have a fan right here just for this is normally it steams up pretty quickly. I've got no steaming, I've got great vision, so that is good. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move over now, I think, to the PSVR 2. Well, the PSVR 1 was a great experience with the lenses in, so let's move over to PSVR 2. And the good thing about it is I don't have to film it at such a weird angle, because it's got its own cameras. I don't have to rely on a camera up there on a shelf to track my position. So this time, apart from having a chainsaw outside my uh, house, I've can sit here, put the headset on, but I'm filming the TV with the GoPro because you can't really see it all. But we're gonna have a go at PSVR 2 and see what that's like. And I hope that guy shuts up outside, but who can tell? Obviously one of the great things about PSVR 2 is uh, you can see your surroundings. It's not uh, unique, certainly, but uh, it's pretty good. Okay, I'm playing a game called, what's it called? A Comic VR, I think. And this is a game which is not so much a game as such. It's just, I call it a relaxer. When I first saw VR, um, it was it was kind of pretend VR. It was the Lawnmower Man when I was little. And one of the things they, they tended to do in that film, when they were sort of pretending what VR was like, is they were doing these sort of really relaxing things, just all floating around in space and stuff. And this is a game where you literally paddle around in a kayak. There are races and stuff to do, but you really don't need it. One of the reasons I'm using this one is, again, it, it's it got some fantastic scenery. It's absolutely amazing. And I want to be able to sort of look around. Again, we've got the, the blue light filter here, and it's so colourful nothing has changed and I've played this game for a good few hours and I literally just paddle around and bizarrely you can see these little waves here I can I can feel it through my body I don't know if it's purely my brain or the subtle haptics on the um, on the headset itself but you can really feel it sort of bump around it's really weird I don't know how they do it and I often go along here just trying to spot fishes I spotted a manta ray the other day and so you can kind of paddle along. 
it's surprisingly um, hard on your arms. I mean, you can go like this and pretend, or you can you can act normal, and it, it really does act like a kayak. You can sort of pull around. All sorts, it just works. Brilliant. Oh, look at that. That is a, uh, a Dorado, or dolphin fish down there. Caught one of those ones. Lots of jumping out of the water and stuff. Anyway, this is Kite VR and it looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the graphics on the PSVR 2 are uh, somewhat of an improvement over the original. They are pretty amazing. And yeah, I'm just enjoying floating around here, looking at the fish, doing a bit of uh, paddling around and stuff like that. But let's, let's have a look at something else because one of the things you, you probably want to know if you're a PSVR 2 user is do the lenses work with eye tracking? Uh, and the answer is absolutely do. If we go on to Horizon Call of the Mountain. So this is Horizon Call of the Mountain, which is sort of a, a follow-on VR adventure from the Horizon uh, games, which are, are amazing in their own self-right. Um, if we continue where I was leaving off from. Now already this is this is me looking around. I'm not touching anything, I'm not moving my head, I'm moving my eyes. And you can see what's going on if I continue. I like this because you can kind of tracks fingers. Thumbs up, all down, pointy. But if I go into uh, the start menu then what I can do, you can see me not move my head or my fingers, I'm just using my eyes to go around stuff. So if I go into the options menu you can see I can move my eyes all along the top, along the bottom row and go back if I want to. So yeah, eye tracking, uh, let's resume, absolutely fine. So let's try this out for, I think we're supposed to climb up here. Oh okay, I'll pick up some food. Yum 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 yum. Right, here we go. This, this is a bit of a new experience for me and I always think, my goodness, this must look ridiculous. So I'm kind of interesting to see what it looks like when I watch it back myself. I don't know what my wife would think if she came home and I'm pretending to climb up somewhere. Where am I going? I'm going over here, I think. Can I hold yeah, I can hold on to that. Ugh. Move over there. Ooh, I'm out of range of the thing. There we go. This is quite weird in terms of having to reposition yourself as you're climbing. Why, would I, why am I making a noise? <laughs> I'm getting tired from doing virtual climbing, that's a bit sad, isn't it? But yeah, the only thing i found in this is you have to get in these really weird positions. I'm sure there must be a setting, so you don't quite have to do this. Of course, a lot of people would be doing this standing up, I guess, so it's a bit easier, but I always play sitting down because I'm extremely lazy. Don't you know, I get out of breath just pretending to climb up things virtually. Yeah, we're up. Oh, something's on fire. I have to say, the slight change in how they've constructed this makes me get a little bit sweatier, this one, sometimes. Or maybe it's just because I was doing all that very active stuff. But yeah, again, lenses are really good. They, they've given me a nice clear view, absolutely spot on, because they're perfect for my prescription. I don't have any problem with uh, that blue light filter doing anything with the colour. That's fantastic. Uh, eye tracking obviously works, and the headset's a lot more comfortable because I can put it in a proper position where I'm not going to have to fiddle about with my glasses. And I'm not worried about damaging the lenses or damaging my glasses by rubbing on each other. And I know some people just buy the plain lenses, they can pop in there for uh, protection. So yeah, all good, lenses work fantastic. Well, I'm pretty impressed. These lenses work great for me. And to be fair, I'm not an optician. I can't look at the lenses and say these are amazing quality these are the best lenses you can get. I can just look through them and say, I can see perfectly, I'm not getting any weird distortions or anything like that, and I don't need to wear my glasses. And so that means I'm a lot more comfortable in my VR goggles and I can use them longer, hopefully without getting, you know, the VR sickness that we can do. So given that these lenses are great for the VR sets I've got, I'm expecting them to be absolutely fantastic on the DJI goggles as well. So if you're in the market for something where you need to create your vision, 
um, give them a go. How much are they? It seems pretty reasonable. Now it says the prices start from $49.95, we're talking US dollars, and you get free shipping if you spend over $49, which is fantastic. They may go up depending on the strength of your prescription. For example, I've got minus six, so the lenses go up like $10 each, and if you want a blue light filter, that's extra. But the easiest thing to do is go to the website, look at the headset or goggles you'd have, put your prescription in, it'll tell you the price, and you know, you can take it from there. Of course, there'll be a link down below where you can check them out, but essentially it's www.honsvr.com. I'd like to thank them for sending me these lenses to try out. That was very kind of them. I'll, I'll certainly be having fun virtually climbing. And yes, I did look back at that video and I did look stupid. And oh my goodness, isn't my posture awful when I play games? I should, I should work on that. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful and I hope you can all have the clearest possible vision you've got, whether you're on FPV goggles, VR headsets or whatever. Catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.